Mankind has many burning questions that we've yet to answer, but perhaps none as enticing as where did we come from? Throughout our history as a sentient species, groups and cultures around the world have sought to answer this question and have come up with incredibly diverse and vibrant creation stories, which deserve their own videos and represent another branch of study altogether. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the most promising scientific leads we have in trying to answer the question, where did life come from? We'll start with the ever-popular primordial soup theory. Since its inception in 1924, proponents of this theory have suspected that the biological building blocks of life could have spontaneously come about from the inorganic ingredients available on early Earth. This school of thought has undergone many revisions and fallen in and out of favor since its early stages. But the core reasoning is this. Early Earth had a chemically reducing atmosphere. This atmosphere, exposed to energy in various forms, produced simple organic compounds. These compounds accumulated in a so-called soup, which may have been concentrated at various locations such as hydrothermal vents or shorelines. By further transformation, more complex organic polymers and ultimately life developed in the soup. Probably the most important evidence for the primordial soup theory is the famous 1952 Miller-Urey experiment. In this experiment, grad student Stanley Miller and Professor Harold Urey simulated early earth conditions in the lab and tested the chemical origin of life under these conditions. Sure enough, the two men found that amino acids could indeed form from inorganic precursors. Since 1952, there have been many similar studies, confirming at least the first half of the primordial soup hypothesis. The debate now is whether these simple building blocks could have gone on to form early life. Another prominent hypothesis is that of panspermia, the idea that life may have been seeded on Earth by asteroid impacts. This idea is a little different in that it doesn't attempt to explain how life originated, just how it got to Earth. Proponents of this hypothesis suspect that simple extremophile lifeforms became trapped in space debris after collisions between planets and small solar system bodies that harbor life. These organisms then remain dormant on the long journey through space until they crash into a planet with ideal conditions, such as large bodies of water and the right atmospheric content, at which point the alien lifeforms could begin to colonize their new environment. The panspermia hypothesis is often criticized for not attempting to explain how this interplanetary life came into existence, simply that it came from somewhere else. Nonetheless, if we were ever to discover an asteroid that showed evidence of primitive organic life, panspermia would have to be seriously considered and given further study. Perhaps the most promising hypothesis right now is the thought that simple life may have originated at deep sea hydrothermal vents. These vents are natural structures at the bottom of the ocean that release huge amounts of chemicals as well as intense heat, forming little oases of warm water in an otherwise frigid environment. Since sunlight can't penetrate that far down into the dark depths of the ocean, there had to be another source of energy for early organisms. Hydrothermal vents contain a mix of chemicals that lend themselves to chemosynthesis, a process like photosynthesis which allows organisms to create their own energy. This hypothesis is promising because, despite the intense heat and pressure around these vents, we always find thriving colonies of extremophile life. This is in stark contrast to the barren expanses of ocean along the seafloor between hydrothermal vents. Archaea, thought to be the most primitive domain of organisms, thrive in the conditions offered by these deep sea oases, which bodes well for the hydrothermal vent hypothesis. Scientists have traced the DNA of all living things back to a common ancestor that could likely have been found at these sites. The hypothesis speculates that over time, these primitive organisms slowly changed and evolved into more complex forms, eventually leading to life as we know it today. This is one of the newer hypotheses trying to answer the question of where life came from, but it seems very promising. The most exciting part about the hydrothermal vent hypothesis is that we could be well on our way to proving this was the origin of life on Earth, but also elsewhere in the universe. Jupiter's icy moon Europa is home to incredible thermal activity. It's so promising that we're sending a probe there in the near future to fly through its amazing plumes and collect samples to test for life. Europa has a thick, icy shell which covers an enormous global ocean. Its proximity to Jupiter stretches and relaxes its surface, generating energy and hydrothermal activity deep beneath the icy crust. If these hydrothermal vents are similar to Earth's, we might not only find life on Europa, but life not entirely unlike that on Earth. Europa is about four and a half billion years old, about the same age as Jupiter. If this hydrothermal activity has been going on for even half that time, and the protective icy shell has shielded its ocean from potential threats, the life we find on Europa might not be so simple. And if we do find life on this icy moon, regardless of complexity, it will all but prove the hydrothermal vent hypothesis on Earth. While there are plenty of other hypotheses about the origins of life on Earth, these three represent the most popular and possibly the most promising explanations. 
But until we can say for certain why we're here, this remains perhaps the greatest question humanity has ever asked. What do you think? Where did life come from? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Remember to click that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video, and click the little bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. You can watch my other space-related content by clicking here, or if you're really bored, you can binge watch all my content by clicking here. Then come unwind and watch me play video games very poorly on my gaming channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.